And unfortunately, Milo had chewed this up. What the hell, Milo? Hey guys, it's Ralph Jarl, and today I'm gonna tell you my top five influential art books that helped me in my art journey. I love art books, I love collecting them. Movie, TV show, games, anime, a lot of my favorite artists have sketchbooks. When I was about 16, I learned that you could become a professional concept artist, illustrator, and do this for a living. These books here really helped with my basic drawing, anatomy, design composition. So if you're looking to become a professional artist or illustrator, you better have these books in my room. Speaking of art books, my newest art book is about to come out. Bloom 2 is a collection of portraits and paint sketches. And I've been working on this for about two years and the official pre-order date is July 20th. So mark your calendars. Without further ado, let's do it. My first art book is Ala Prima, everything I know about painting and more. This is by Richard Schmid. He's an absolute genius. I know hundreds of friends and artists who vouch for him in this book. And this is Ala Prima number two, which is essentially just number one, but expanded, so it has more content. Um, also, uh, Richard Schmidt just passed away this year. My condolences to his family, rest in peace. So what I love about Ala Prima is not only that it teaches instructional art concepts and foundations, but he taught me a lot of life lessons. Us as artists, we're not only just artists, but we're human beings and how we feel about our work, how we approach it mentally, emotionally is also very important. He teaches us about having a code. Don't just make art for art. Think about why you're making the art, what message you want to say about your art, the deeper meaning and emotion behind what you want to portray. He teaches us about having confidence in our work. I know self-doubt cripples us all. Sometimes we feel like we're not improving fast enough or we're feeling that we need to compare ourselves to other artists. It's all about having confidence in your journey, knowing that it's thousands and thousands of hours of hard work and you can't really rush that. It teaches really amazing key concepts. You can stop on a page and learn something new. Richard Schmidt is such an intentional painter. You know, every stroke is there for a reason and he really thinks about it. He did that in like one brush stroke. A side of a guitar with one brush stroke. I think he's the king of what to leave out and what to leave in. Intentful art and confidence in art are all abstract ideas, but don't worry. He also breaks down everything he knows about painting, like color theory, giving you instructional content if that is your flavor too. If you are an aspiring painter, uh, digitally or tr traditional, uh, this book is for you. It teaches so many amazing concepts. You must add this to your collection. The next book up is two books by Andrew Loomis. It's creative illustration and figure drawing for all it's worth. I'm kind of combining these two as one. I also pirated these two books when I was young. I was broke, but now, hey, I am supporting, I'm buying it, you know, as part of my collection. These two books here really taught me how to draw better. This is also the start of my figure drawing education. His teaching style, breaking complex shapes, all really works for me as an artist. This book teaches a lot of fundamental, you know, composition, color, tone with the main intention of giving you guys creative challenges and parameters. For example, this is called Line for Itself, where he starts with some squiggly lines and then he creates a composition out of those lines and shapes and it still retains to the original gesture, the original line of action. There's also another creative challenge here where he just writes letters and then he creates composition out of those letters. By applying some of these creative challenges and techniques, you become a more creative and versatile artist. So if you're struggling with composition or constantly feel like you're in an art block, Angel Loomis does a great job of giving you creative techniques that can break you out of that headspace. And the next book up, is Claire Wendling's Iguana Bay. Claire Wendling is one of my all time favorite artists. A lot of the books that I've mentioned before are more instructional books, you know, uh, foundational books to teach you how to draw and paint. But Iguana Bay is simply a sketchbook full of characters and animals. And I am so attracted to her drawing style. I thought I knew what drawing was until I saw her work, until I picked up this book. Claire Wendling is one of the most famous French artists known for her animal drawings and her comic book work. Let me try to find one of my favorite all-time drawings. Oh, it's a cheetah. Look at this. Look how beautiful this is. I'm mind blown. It's, I can look at this forever, but one thing that I love that she does 
is she redraw the same drawing at least three or four times. And with each drawing, it gets better and better and better because she's making the design decision. And by the time you get to the final one, it's just a masterpiece. So when I was studying art, I looked at this book to elevate my drawing, try to learn some techniques through her, trying to learn some practices, you know, maybe I can redraw some of my own art, make better decisions on the next one. So if you're looking to get better at drawing and want someone to look at, maybe you're just looking to get inspired, I really recommend Claire Wendland's work. This one is Iguana Bay. 2.0. The fourth book is J.C. Leindecker, famous American artist. Yeah, this is another book that I use for inspiration. He is a master. He can actually paint like Sargent, similar to Richard Schmidt, like we just saw for Ala Prima, but he chooses to design in this style because this is what he's attracted to. But I'm attracted to J.C. Leindecker's style. It feels more shape-based, it's more design. It almost has an, a taste of animation. So this book here is just a embodiment of a lot of his work, early work to more contemporary work. You can see full paintings here and then work he's done for magazines and how they're different. Also, I look at JC Leindecker for the way he renders clothes. I think clothes can be such an organic mess to paint and try to figure out, but he does a very skillful and elegant job of rendering a different clothing material. I think out of everyone I just mentioned, JC Leyendecker really shines in composition, design choices, and rendering clothing and skin. And the last and final book is The Skillful Huntsman, A Visual Development of a Grim Tale by Kang Lee, Mike Yamada, Felix Yoon, and Scott Robertson. Yeah, this book has a super special place in my heart because it secured my feelings of wanting to become a concept artist and illustrator. Super fun fact, Mike Yamada was one of my art mentors in art school, so I think it's super cool. For every movie, TV show, and video game, the designs have to go through a design process. Beginning stages and how they landed the final design on what you see on screen, and and this book does an amazing job of showing that process. I think every character goes through the ideation phase and then you get an insight on what the designers are thinking about as they start refining the design and then they land at the final iteration. I think this book is super versatile. It has a range of subjects, characters, environments, creatures, the vehicles, and props. It features three artists and so you get a range of styles. If you guys are looking to become an illustrator or concept artist for TV shows, movies, or video games, I highly recommend this book, The Skillful Huntsman. Yeah, those are the top five influential art books for my art journey. But while deciding, I have another five honorable mentions and I couldn't really uh, leave them out of the picture. I wanted to include it into this video. And so the first one up, I don't know how to say this, Bob, B Bab El Alam. I'm so sorry if I'm butchering it, but this is by one of my favorite artists, Sergio Topi. And this book is super special to me because it was given to me by my mentor, Jamie Jones, for my birthday. And unfortunately, Milo had chewed this up. What the hell, Milo? Sergio is just a king at ink work, at composition, and making complex forms as simplest as they can be, and it looks super aesthetic. It has a modern comic book feel to it. His silhouettes are probably the best I've ever seen. If I squint, this silhouette reads really beautifully. The next one, actually, this was supposed to be in my top five, but I'm a terrible reader and I don't remember much from this book, but at the time, I applied the lesson to my own art and it helped my work a lot. This is a standard for any artist. Color temperature, day, night, sources of light. If you are looking to improve your color and light, this is the number one book that I recommend. The next honorable mention is Century Two by Sid Mead. Some of you might know that I have another passion. I love industrial design. That is a side I want to explore more of, but in school, I drew a lot of industrial design and Sid Mead actually signed this book in 2011 and he signed it. For Ross, I feel so special. Unfortunately, he also passed away recently. He worked as a concept designer on movies like Aliens, Blade Runner, and also Tron. It's so elegant, it's, it's so simple, yet it explains so much. And Sid Mead forever will be one of my greatest inspirations. The next honorable mention is Frame Inc. Drawing and Composition for Visual Storyteller by Marcus Mateo Mester. 
I'm so sorry if I butchered that, but this is such an amazing book. It's very popular, actually. It really helps you to plan your shots, lighting and composition and shapes to portray to the audience the feeling that they want to get across. And this book really teaches how to storytell properly. If you're looking into improving your story frame, your storytelling, this is the book to go. And the last and final honorable mention, this might be a little unexpected, a little weird, but it's the Pokemon Classic Collector Handbook by Scholastic Books. Loved this book as a kid. I got it when I was five or six. Chances are, if you were a 90s kid, you probably have had this book. This book really inspired me to create my own creature, to dive deep into my own character. Um, unfortunately, this is not the cover that I had. This is an updated version. The vintage handbook that I had was actually red. You can find it on eBay. One of my criterias for having good character design or creature design is if they're memorable. And I think these characters are extremely memorable. I, I think I can name all the Pokemon from one to 151. Maybe it's just nostalgia. I don't know. I don't know if this book is a great use for an aspiring artist, but I think something had to be said about the highest grossing intellectual property of all time. And this book really inspired me as a kid and helped launch my art journey at four or five years old. Yeah, so those are my top five art books and then another five honorable mention. I know that's a lot of book, but maybe pick one or two that really speak to you. You can probably find it on Amazon. I know a lot of people nowadays just stick to video content, but nothing beats some of these OG art books, these OG artists. After you've read some of these books, and if you still prefer video content, then I'm running a digital art bootcamp over on Patreon. Yeah, we're a few months in, and the most common question I get asked is if it's too late to join, and no, it's not. We have brand new people join every month. Some people are still completing some of the earlier assignments, so we'd love to have you. It's never too late to join. And you might have noticed at the end of some recent video, the patron feature. Yeah, this is a small gesture from me to you just to say thank you for all the support you've given me. It's been a pleasure being your teacher and helping you guys grow. I've seen some amazing growth just in four months. Like, look at this one. Oh, that's so sick. And so if you want to join in, uh, thousands of students, head to patreon.com slash rockstars. So don't forget to subscribe and oh, don't forget my new art book, Bloom 2, pre-order July 20th. Remember, every day is a color rush day.